And here we go on our Tuesday edition of the Orange and Brown Talk podcast, the Hey Mary Kay edition of the podcast. Mary Kay, there was so much uh, that's happened over the the last few days that I figured we would just kind of, we have our topic. So our Football Insider subscribers, we'll we'll get to your questions next week. I know you have a bunch, but uh, there there was plenty we wanted to get to. So Jadavion Clowney, let's start there. Back with the Cleveland Browns as you broke on Sunday afternoon. Uh, So let's just start here. Hey Mary Kay. Are you surprised Jadavian's back or was this kind of coming for a while? This was coming for a while. Um, I had the story all written, ready to go. It was really just a matter of time. It was a matter of finalizing the money and getting that right. And he did have a couple of other opportunities, uh, but those were uh, multi-year opportunities in the $14, $15 million range total. So I think for one season, this was uh, his best chance. And then also it gives him an opportunity to hit the market again at the end of next year. And I mean, you can make a nice living if you're going to make, you know, $10 million and then another 10 million and another $10 million a year. It's really not a bad way to go for him at this point in his career, but I'm not surprised at all. I knew it was coming uh, and I knew it was going to happen fairly soon. So you, so you hit on a few things there and, and um, I wrote about this in our newsletter for Monday. Um, th- this was sort of a, this was perfect for both sides. This was sort of a necessity for the Browns and it was, it was really good for Jadavion. And I mean, I just, let's just start with the situation moving forward after this year. So he's 29, just turned 29 in February. Uh, He would hit the market again at age 30. And if he does that with productive back-to-back seasons, he's got a chance to maybe kind of score that last kind of multi-year deal with some real guaranteed money in it, as opposed to having to go year by year. Now, maybe he wants to go year by year. Maybe that's just what he wants to do for the rest of his career. But this is kind of a a moment for him where if he puts two really good seasons together back to back, he might be kind of a hot commodity next off season. He could be. If he has the kind of season that he had last year, where he basically stayed healthy for most of the season for the first time in a long time. He has a, an extensive injury history, but he stayed very healthy and, you know, he was perfect for this scheme. It's basically, you know, dog, go eat. I mean, like go forward, get to the quarterback. He's also really good at setting the edge. That's one of the things that he does almost better than anybody in the NFL from the defensive end position. So he did that very well too. He complimented miles Garrett very nicely Jadavian had his nine sacks after only having three in his previous 19 games. It helped Miles freed him up to get 16, which set the single season Browns record. Uh, So it worked out for both of them. And you can see that Miles was all about this. Okay, he lobbied for Jadavian Clowney. And then after Jadavian Clowney was signed yesterday, he said it's about damn time. So he knows that Jadavian is good for him. Those two guys were fast friends. Uh, Now, some of that stems from back when uh, they both had Bus Cook as their agent. Now, ironically enough, neither of them have Bus Cook as their agent anymore. Uh, Jadavian is with Kennard McGuire, a longtime, very well-established and well-respected agent. And as we now know, Miles Garrett has moved over to Clutch Sports, uh, which was founded by Rich Paul. And it's, you know, also the agency that represents LeBron James, who is Rich Paul's very, very close friend. So Miles is basically part of the LeBron LeBron James sports family now, which I think is another significant development. But uh, absolutely 100%, uh, this Jadavian Clowney signing, is it's good for him. It's good for the Browns. And I just think he's going to be so good for the uh, for the young guys on the team that just got drafted. So on that Brown side, you know, the way I see it for them is they, they almost had to do this. There was no, like, you could not go into the season, a season when you're trying to win a Super Bowl with your options at your other edge rush, you know, Chase Winovich, Alex Wright, Isaiah Thomas, I don't know, Porter Gusta. I mean, you couldn't go into the season with the, counting on those guys to be your number two edge rushers. That would be a pretty big ask considering the expectations for this team and this defense. Absolutely. 100%. This was a move that needed to be made. Uh, There really was no one else left that they were looking at that, that is in this class of defensive ends for a while. They were kind of looking at Jerry Hughes. He ended up signing with the Texans, um, but they were, they were looking at Jerry for a while as a possible plan B if they couldn't get Jadavian, 
once that happened, I was convinced that Jadavian was coming back. I, I felt all along that he would and that it was just a matter of time. But um, it was something that they had to do. If you want to maximize the talents and the abilities of Miles Garrett, keep him playing at that very high level and make this defensive line go the way that you want it to, uh, you know, with guys that can move, you know, on play at either side, can move inside and have that kind of flexibility. This was a move they really needed to make. 